arriving in southern Germany for their annual summit. And one of the major issues is climate change. With the major UN summit coming up in December, Germany wants its wealthy partners to come to significant emission cuts. It aims to completely decarbonize its economy by the end of the century. CCTV's Guy Henderson reports, while Germany may be leading the way, there's still a long way to go. 60 kilometers off Germany's North Sea coastline, a green revolution. By the end of 2015, 13 offshore wind farms will provide power for 3.4 million German homes. There are plans for at least 20 more. Germany has laid down a marker. It wants to cut its carbon emissions by 40% of 1990 levels by 2020. So what started as a test case five years ago is now the centerpiece of a hugely ambitious plan. Well, it's a very good idea because the wind blows much stronger at sea. Therefore, we can produce power much more constantly, about twice as much uh, electricity than compared to onshore wind uh, in, in Germany. And uh, of course, uh, we can produce large uh, amounts of power. We have sizes of offshore wind farms which are comparable in capacity to conventional power plants. Germany employs 371,000 people in the renewable energy sector, more than half the European total. While saving the planet is the end goal, government needs voters' support. In remote nearby communities, an initially skeptical public is now generally enthusiastic. The construction of a wind turbine is simply breathtaking. Just imagine the dimensions. Every single installation is as big as the Cologne Cathedral, meaning 155, 160 meters tall. Those are not wind farms being built out there. Those are power plants being built into the sea. And those power plants are based on a completely new technology. Many other countries are on similar paths, but few are moving faster. After the meltdown at Japan's Fukushima, Germany closed eight nuclear power plants in one year. Coal made up much of the shortfall and emissions increased. Great, but this mood did not... Professor Claudia Kempfert has been a lead critic of what she says is bad government planning. She believes other G7 countries should take note. Of course, the whole system needs to change. We are increasing uh, renewable energy like windmills and solar and biomass and all this. But now also we need more storage in the future intelligent grids and more flexibility, more dynamics. So we, we will change the whole system and this makes it complicated. Some studies claim major emerging economies are now doing more than the richest ones to tackle climate change. At pre-summit meetings, G7 ministers stressed that keeping down costs was vital to keeping pace. Clean energy technology innovation, by which I mean uh, uh, first and foremost cost reduction, of these technologies uh, is going to be central to meeting our climate goals. Germany's technical prowess is almost unrivaled. Still, despite government subsidies, its consumers' energy bills are amongst the highest in the world. But there is surely no turning back. The cost of that would be immeasurable. Germany's message is that tackling climate change can present just as many opportunities as it does challenges. And with the global price of oil so low, there's also a pretty good argument that there may be few better opportunities to clinch the kind of meaningful deal that seems to have eluded world leaders for so long. Now, of course, the G7 group can't itself ensure that, but agreements made here can set the tone. Guy Henderson, CCTV at the Garmisch-Partenkirchen Ski Resort, south of Munich.